In the last video, we figured out how to figure out the sum of the roots of a polynomial. What we're going to try to attempt to do in this video is think about the sum of the squares of the roots of a polynomial. So let's think about that a little bit. So let's say that I have a second degree polynomial that looks like this. So it's x squared plus a1x plus a2, and this is equal to 0. We saw, and actually, I'll just redo some of what we did in the last video because it's going to be useful over here. This thing is going to have two roots, r1 and r2, two roots, and that tells us that this thing can be rewritten as x minus r1 times x minus r2 is equal to 0. And if you expand this out, you get x squared minus r1 plus r2, r1 plus r2, x plus r1 r2. So that's what you get right over there. Now let's think about it. We figured out from the last video that r1 plus r2, we figured out that r1 plus r2, which is right over here, that needs to be equal to the negative of this coefficient. This a1 over here is equal to the negative of r1 plus r2. So r1 plus r2 is equal to the negative of a1 is equal to the negative of a1. So let's see if we can use that information right over there to figure out what to figure out, let me do this in a new color, to figure out what r1 squared plus r2 squared is. So let's see how we could get that. Well, one place that we could start off with, we could start off with r1 plus r2 squared. So r1 plus r2 squared, which is, of course, the same thing as negative a1 squared, which would be the same thing as a1 squared. a1 squared, I could put a negative here, but a negative 1 times negative 1 is obviously a positive 1. This is going to be equal to r1 squared plus 2r1 r2 plus r2 squared. So this has the sum that we care about in it. So let's call this, let me call this over here, let's call this sum 1. We're just raising the roots to the first power. Let's call this over here, let's call this sum 2. So this over here, we've written essentially that sum 1 squared that sum s sub 1 squared is equal to this plus this is s sub 2, is equal to s sub 2 plus 2 r1 r2. So plus, plus 2 r1 r2. Now, can we figure out what r1 r2 is based on looking at the actual original polynomial? Well, you look over here, if you just did an expansion, of course, I forgot to write here that this is equal to 0. r1, r2, r1, r2 is, in, is essentially represented by a2 over here. It's represented, so to take the first degree sum, or the, the, the roots raised to the first power sum, we looked at this coefficient. Now all of a sudden, we're involving the coefficient to the right of that. We're going two degrees below the degree of the polynomial. So this right over here is a2. So r1 r2 is a2, that's a2. This right here, this right here, this whole expression is a1 squared. So if we want to solve for this sum, if we want to solve for s sub 2, we would get s sub 2 is equal to a1 squared, a1 squared, that's this over here, minus, minus 2 times a sub 2. So we just figured out a fast way to figure out the sum of the squares of the roots of a just a second degree quadratic right now. So for example, if I were to give you, if I were to give you, let me give you something strange. So if I were to give you 7x squared minus pi x plus e is equal to 0, and someone said, I want you to figure out the squares, the sum of the squares of the roots of this polynomial. First, you want to make this the coefficient in front of the x squared 1. So divide everything by 7. So you get x squared minus pi over 7 x plus e over 7 is equal to 0. And then you can just use the result we just found. The, the sum of the square of the roots is this s2 over here. Whatever the roots are, you square each of them. You take their sum. It's going to be equal to a1 squared. So it's going to be pi squared over 49. I'm just squaring this right over here. Or I could just square that. The negative doesn't matter when I'm squaring. Minus 2 times this, minus 2 times e squared. 
over 7. And that's about as simplified as you can get this expression. So it's pi squared over 49 minus 2e over 7, which is by itself a pretty neat result, because it would be very hard to find the roots of this. You get some crazy numbers, and then you'd have to square them and sum them. But we just figured out a very fast way of doing it. Now let's see if we can extend this to the third degree. And it actually turns out you can. Not only to the third degree, you can extend this to the nth degree. And I might do an induction proof. It gets a little bit messier than when you just take the first degree sum right over here, where you take the sum of the roots to the first power. But let's just see if it works for let's see if it works for the third power. So let's say I have the polynomial x to the third plus a one x squared plus a two x plus a three is equal to zero. We have three roots r one, r two, r three, which tells us that we can rewrite this polynomial as x minus or this equation is x minus r one times x minus r two times x minus x minus r3 is equal to 0. Now we already figured out we already figured out what this part right here is. It's this thing over here. We already multiplied it out. It's this thing. It is this over here. So essentially to get this whole expression, we just have to multiply this times this thing over here. So we are essentially we can just use the distributive property, multiply this thing times each of these terms. So first, let's multiply this whole thing by x. So you get x to the third, x to the third minus r1 plus r2 times x squared plus r1 r2x. So I just multiplied this thing over here times x. Now I can just multiply this thing up here times negative r3. So negative r3 times x squared. So it's negative r3x squared. Negative r3 times this term over here gives us, it will give us, well, it's going to be a negative times a negative, so it's going to be a positive. So it's positive r3 times this. We can distribute them. We're going to get r1, r1, so let me make sure I'm doing negative r3 times this over here is going to be negative, let me just write it like this. Negative, I don't want to skip steps. So, neg so it's going to be. The negative and the negative cancel out. So negative r3 times r1 plus r2x. And then finally, you have the negative r3 times r1, r2. So minus r1, r2, r3. And all of that's going to be equal to 0. But let's simplify it. So this thing is going to be equal to x to the third minus r1 plus r2 plus r3. We did that in the last video. That shows us that the sum of our roots is this second coefficient here, the coefficient on the second degree term, x squared. And then we go over here. We have r1, r2x, so plus r1, r2x. Then you have r1, r3x, plus r1, r3. I'm just distributing this. And then you have r3 times r2, so plus r2, r3 all of that times x, and then minus r1, r2, and r3. Now, if we want to take the sum of the squares of the roots, so if we want to take r1 squared plus r2 squared plus r3 squared, well, we could try to do the same thing. We could take r1 plus r2 plus r3, which we know how to calculate. We can square that. And we're essentially going to get when you when you square this, you're going to get. Let me see if I can write it neatly. This is going to be equal to the r1 times. So I'm just going to let me just rewrite. It. This is equal to just to clarify. This is equal to r1 plus r2 plus r3 times r1 plus r2 plus r3. So it's going to be. I can start over here. r1 times r1 is r1 squared plus r1 times r2, so r1, r2, plus r1 times r3, r1 times r3, and then plus, now we're in the r2, r2 times r1 is plus r1, r2, same thing. I'm just switching the order so it looks the same. r2 times r2 is r2 squared. And then r2 times r3 is plus r2, r3. And then let's go to the r3. r3 times r1 is just another r3, r1, I just switched the order. r3 times r2 is another r2, r3. And then r3 times r3 is r3 squared. So what did we just get here when we squared just the straight up sum? You got, 
you got r1 squared plus r2 squared plus r3 squared plus you essentially got all of the different combinations but you got them twice you have 2 r1 r2 so you have 2 times r1 r2 r1 r2 then you have 2 r1s r3 so plus r1 r3 i have the 2 out front plus r2 r3 r2 r3 and this over here is equal to remember what we did this is equal to r1 plus r2 plus r3 squared so we got essentially the same result remember this thing right over here let's make things clear this thing over here r1 are all the combinations of the products of the roots. If you look over here, that's exactly what this thing is over here, which must be what our a2 coefficient is. So this is our a2 coefficient. This r1 plus r2 plus r3, that is, we figured out multiple times, that's this thing right over here, which is going to be a1. So this is going to be a negative, or it's equal to negative a1, but you take negative a1 squared. And that's the same thing as a1 squared. So this is a1 squared. And this is the sum that we care about. This is the sum that we care about. So we get, we get r1 squared plus r2 squared plus r3 squared is equal to this business over here. It's equal to a1 squared minus 2 minus 2 times a2. So we got the exact same result. We got the exact same result that we got for the second degree case. And it actually turns out this will be true of any degree. I haven't proven to you yet, so although I can make an induction argument now, we've proven some base cases. But just to make it clear how to apply it, I give you crazy polynomial. I give you, let's do a third degree case. Let's, let's say 10x to the third minus 5x squared plus 7x. I'm making this up on the fly. Plus 2, plus 2 is equal to 0. And if I were to ask you the sum, if I were to ask you r1 squared plus r2 squared plus r3 squared, if I were to ask you the square of the sum of the roots, you just take the first, you just take, well, let me be ca careful. You have to make sure that you have a 1 in front of the highest degree term. So this thing over here has to be rewritten. Divide both sides by 10. x to the third minus 5 over 10, so minus 1 half x squared plus 7 over 10x plus 2 over 10, which is 1 fifth, is equal to 0. So I just divided both sides by 10. And yep, I did that part right. And now we can apply this. I, was, I almost made a careless mistake. You have to have a 1 coefficient out here, at least the way that we've derived this. So this sum is going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to a1 squared. So this, you can 1 half squared. So a1 is. Well, a1 is actually negative 1 half, but negative 1 half squared is just 1 fourth. So it is going to be 1 fourth minus, minus 2 times a2. Minus 2 times a2. So minus 2 times 7 over 10. So this is equal to 1 fourth, 1 fourth minus, minus 14 over 10. Minus 14 over 10. We could find a common denominator here. This is the same thing as 5, 5 over 20, 5 over 20 minus 14 over 10, and this is equal, or sorry, minus 28 over 20. I should do minus 28 over 20, which is equal to negative 23 over 20. And you might say, hey Sal, hang on. I'm taking the square of a bunch of roots and adding them up, and I'm getting a negative number. I thought squares, I thought when I square numbers, I always get a positive number. That would be true if you're dealing with real numbers. But remember, the roots of a polynomial can be complex. And complex numbers squared can be negative numbers. So this obviously is involving some type of complex roots. But we know that the sum, when you take the sum of the squares of those complex roots, you get negative 23 over 20.